when you imagine sharing with your children or even your grandchildren the story of how we moved to a renewable energy future, what was your role in that story as you tell it to them? What's the legacy? It seems like a strange combination, but for me, my degree is in biology, but then I started driving race cars. It's actually my race car that gives me the ability to talk to 75 million race fans on one continent and bring attention to the fact that we're facing enormous environmental challenges that we've never faced in history before. The most important conversation that we can have is to talk to people that aren't convinced yet. So I feel like that's my legacy, is to change the minds of as many people as I can using my voice. I think one of the most important transitions in realizing this that I certainly hope to be part of is not just sharing the knowledge that I and that I know, you know we share, but is also really opening my ears to try to put myself in the shoes of the other people in different communities that are different from mine, where it's designing a solution that contributes to resolving the concerns that that community has, but is a more you know, participatory process. A legacy or a way of looking at this could be um, going back over the last 25 years, if you look at um, you know, planting um, forests on every continent, and masses of uh, trees I think is one of the most interesting things that, that we could have done. But I think the key thing now is to actually look at the future and uh, the future is about health, it's about um, atmosphere, it's about a clean environment for people, it's educational systems and having a, a clean energy technology that actually has uh, financial services around that, equity and uh, where we bring forward people to a point where we can all move together on mass towards a better future for us all. I, I totally agree with that. I, I agree with everything that you've you've all said. Imagine an hourglass, right? Uh, and turn it on its side. And like, let's say like uh, the left is the past and we're in this little skinny part right here, right now, and the future is the other side of the hourglass on the right. What if our legacy is actually in this little skinny part where we are constrained because we're in the middle of a transition between a fossil fuel based system and a clean energy based system. Instead of like placing all of our constraints on like future generations, you have to save, you have to not do this, you have to not do that. Imagine a system which is realistic, an infrastructure that supports essentially doing what you want. Not, I'm not saying like do anything you want. You can't litter and like throw paper out the window. A world of abundance, right? And with abundance comes productivity, becomes uh, more information. What if we are just in that middle part right now and our role kind of sucks, like, because we're here. Like, it sucks to be here. Like, we weren't back there, like, when oil was awesome, and we're not going to be out there when clean energy is awesome. Maybe our legacy sucks, and that's not bad. The role that I'd like to have in this future is really around bringing people together from all different kinds of perspectives and all different kinds of organizations that have an impact on where the future goes and how we get to the larger hourglass side. What's really important is to be so thoughtful about the decisions and investments we make that they stand up over generations. And then for, for me personally, you know, driving a biodiesel car, but better yet riding my bike, which is, you know, a much more efficient way to use energy, um, and making decisions personally so that people say, yeah, it makes sense to work on these much larger issues, but it all starts at home, and that's the legacy I picture.